Well, the Democratic primary electorate includes millions of African American and Hispanic voters. And according to the press, the geniuses on cable news, they're racists because not enough of them have backed African American candidates. Watch this. A stage uh, for the Democratic Party that is all white is not a stage that the Democrats should be proud of in 2020. And with Booker dropping out, uh, this uh, contest becomes much uh, more white. It was tough for Cory Booker to get beyond 4%, just like it was tough for Kamala Harris and others. The voters here don't look like the voters in the rest of the electorate in the country, and it's a tougher race for them. The way they've set up the um, primary order of states is a bad idea um, based upon lily white states that don't reflect the Democratic Party. There's really um, a lot of ways to win this um, presidential election for Democrats, and it's not just getting all those crusty white guys in diners in, um, you know, the Midwest. Nothing against guys in diners in the Midwest. I swear the Trump campaign is paying that woman. She's just, <laughs> she's just an ad for Trump. Dave Rubin joins us. The Rubin Report on YouTube. Our old friend joins us here on set. Dave, great to see you tonight. It's good to see you. Before you say anything, Tucker, I just want to be very clear. The woman you're talking about right there yes. in the clip, that's Jennifer Rubin. I am in no way related to I, her. I totally forgot you to say that. It is very no. important that I well, say she's that a at plant. the beginning. Clearly, she's a plant. What kind of conservative is she? Is she and the she? Jeb Bush's former spokeswoman who's on MSNBC? You watch them and you're like, you know what? I'm voting for Trump. I don't care. It's, it's um, really confusing. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway. Let yes. me ask you, how dehumanizing do you think it is to see people in the media who appear intent on dividing the country along racial lines to dismiss people on the basis of their skin color? Like, how do we get to this place? Who was that guy that wanted his children not to be judged by the color of their skin, oh, by, by, by the, the content yeah. of their character? I, that guy was kind of right. That guy, MLK Jr., obviously, he was a liberal. He was a liberal. But the progressives have nothing to do with true liberalism. And there's a hilarity going on here, because for years, they've been screaming that all of us, anyone who's not a woke, intersectional progressive, is a racist. But what was going to be at the end of the road of that. At the end of the road is exactly what's happening right now. They would have to turn it on themselves. And now they are turning it on themselves. So MSNBC is now putting up people to basically say, forget those Republicans and conservatives and Trump supporters that are racist. We're the racists because in an hour from right now, there's going to be a Democratic debate. I think it's on CNN. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to be all white people. Thank God Elizabeth is one 1024 uh, Native American or whatever it is. I don't know what happened. Andrew Yang, he should be in there, but his Asian-ness doesn't even count, right, because Asian doesn't sort of fit into the intersectional calculator. So this is this is the end game of what all of these competing... But, but what they're really have, doing, have come, is, I, is I think you're suggesting, if you want to be precise about it, they're blaming black voters. I mean, there's a reason, the only right, they're reason... they're saying blacks aren't supporting their own. I mean, think how insane th that They're is. turning to the African-American electorate of the Democratic Party and saying, you're bigots. Yeah. Like, the rich people on MSNBC, people like, the, I can't even remember her name, but the woman you share in the last name with... Jennifer That's what Rubin, they're doing. Yeah. Jennifer Rubin. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, you may remember that at the State of the Union last year when President Trump said we have the lowest all-time black unemployment and the cameras flashed to the Congressional Black Caucus and they sat there like this. Now, if you cared about your country, if you cared about black people or just citizens of your country, wouldn't you be happy that they have low unemployment? That would be good. But if you're a partisan hack, then you wouldn't care about that. And I think most people are waking up to this stuff. I mean, it's I, I sent out a tweet at the beginning on, on uh, January 1st saying this is the year of the implosion of this thing. Of wokeness? It, uh, of wokeness. It has to implode now because Elizabeth has to call Bernie a misogynist and someone else has to call Bernie a racist because that's all they got because they can't they can't debate on policy they can't really debate on taxes or foreign policy or any of these things so they have to get you on all of these things because it's it's sort of worked in a lot of ways against conservatives right you're one of the few guys that consistently stands up against it but it silences a lot of people and yeah, I think this is I think this is the year that it it just they've cried wolf for because too long I, I, the polling I look at suggests that really nobody is for this crap other than a very tiny percentage of MSNBC hosts for example it's, but like your average person of all 
any color. Doesn't like this garbage. Nobody cares. It's it's an athema and it's a reverse of what the American dream is. Nobody cares what your skin color is. Nobody cares what your gender is or even your sexuality or any of these things. If you're an American and you live by the laws of America and, yes. and, and you work hard and, and try to better your life and your family's life, that's what this whole thing is about. But why do they never talk about that? Exactly. Why why do they why are they afraid to say words like liberty and freedom? Imagine that. Imagine those you know who said those words? Tulsi Gabbard said it, and now she's out. Yeah, they hate her, right? Yeah. I, I can't wait till these are the worst people I've ever dealt with, and, uh, and I, yeah. I can't wait till they're gone. Dave Rubin, great to see you. Great to see you, man. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.